much. We are live at Google headquarters at the Google I.O. Developers Conference where uh, Xiaomi and Hugo Barra just unveiled a new set-top box for the U.S. market called the Mi Box. Um, so you've already got your line of Mi TVs. How does the Mi Box fit into your bigger vision? So Mi Box, which is right here so that everybody <laughs> sees it, um, is a TV streaming device, um, what some people call an OTT mm -hmm. uh, or set-top box. Um, We've been making TV devices for a while now in China. We make TVs, big TV sets, up to 70 inches now, but we also make these boxes. These are actually incredibly popular because it's a way to get content you know, pretty easily over the internet. Um, the world has been moving away from linear TV, right? So these actually become more important than like a cable set-top box. So why should I, in the US, buy this over Google's or Amazon set-top box or an Apple TV? So we're bringing, um, we're packing quite a bit in here, both hardware and software. Really fast processor, we're using a chipset that's commonly used on mobile phones, right? Mm -hmm. So it's really fast for games, for example. Um, and we're introducing some video capabilities um, that are pretty unique also, 60 frame per second 4K video. This new thing called HDR, which is a new kind of video format that the likes of Netflix and Voodoo are introducing new content for. Um, so it's a, it's a great product, and it runs Android TV. Right, which is one of the most important things because with Android TV comes essentially all of Google's innovation, their services, Google Play, YouTube, and so on. So it's a pretty amazing package. So when will it be available and how much will it cost? Uh, we, we're seeing everything except that, <laughs> <laughs> uh, in that we're, we're previewing it here at I.O. It was a great opportunity. Uh, we're launching it in sort of collaboration with Google. Uh, and we'll be launching it in a few months. Uh, it'll certainly happen within this year. And the price will be pretty amazing, as you'd expect from us. So you also announced that you're going to be making a Daydream-ready phone. Daydream is Google's new mobile platform for virtual reality. How quickly do you think these phones will take off? What will they be able to do? So um, for, first of all, I think it's a massive initiative for our industry. Because uh, what Google is doing here is they're saying, let's focus on the thing that matters, which is the mobile platform, right? That's what we all carry in our pockets. But let's make sure that it's really good, meaning from a quality perspective, you don't get dizzy, you don't get a headache, and so on. So these guys have spent a considerable amount of time, and we've been tracking this very closely, figuring out what does it take to build a good VR experience mm -hmm. on a phone, right? Mm -hmm. Or using a phone as your screen with a headset, of course. Um, and uh, this takes a huge amount of engineering work, also from us. Yeah which is why being part of this Daydream program, we're gonna be making what's called Daydream Ready Phones. Yeah. It's a big deal because it really, the, the bar is very high. Yeah. Mostly because if the difference between, for example, your head moving yeah. and the screen updating is more than 20 milliseconds, your brain notices it. Right, so to make phones that can update the screen as quickly requires a lot of engineering. But so what's the time frame on this? Is this like near term? I mean, it, this sounds it, so futuristic. So Google is saying uh, these phones will start coming out much later this year. Uh -huh. uh, so I think this is like, this is mostly a 2017 thing uh -huh. from the point of view of yeah. the chipsets that it requires, the kinds of screens that it requires, and so on and so forth. Um, so yours will be out in 2017. Uh, we haven't actually uh -huh. finalized yeah. exactly which product and when, but it's later this year, sometime early next year. That's what we're thinking roughly. Now, on the issue of smartphones, um, Xiaomi missed its targets for, for last year. You said that you thought you might sell 80 to 100 million phones. You sold 70 million. What do you think happened? Um, so first of all, we don't really have set targets. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that was a number that became a target mm -hmm. somehow. Uh, the way to think about it is, well, first of all, very, very competitive industry. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, uh, we really are focused on user acquisition, mm -hmm. right? So we're focused on acquiring internet users, more importantly than selling phones, mm -hmm. uh, and also supply chain as well. Uh, you know, we obviously make phones as quickly as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. Demand is much higher than, mm -hmm. than what we've supplied so far. So we're still ramping up, right? We're still ramping up, constantly ramping up. Um, but the key point here is we don't measure ourselves on how many phones we sell. We measure ourselves on how many internet users we acquire, how many hours a day do they spend consuming these services which we monetize, uh -huh. and of course, how much revenue per user are we generating. Now, we don't talk about these things openly, but these are the numbers that we look at the, you know, most closely internally. So the global smartphone market is saturating, and it's saturating in China. How do you overcome that? Um, so. It is, and what trends are you? It seeing? is certainly a saturating market. You know, we estimate China will top up or top out at about half a billion phones a year, which is a big number, by the way. Um, so there's some growth opportunity for us in China, particularly as online, by the way, which is the channel that we almost 
on continues to grow as a percentage of total retail. Right? So that's actually huge room for us to grow in China still. But where we're obviously going for growth as well and expansion are other markets. Right. Um, India is the market that we've chosen as our second market in the world. That's where I spend, as you know, a lot of my yeah. time. And we continue to hit um, sales records in India. So our business in India is going super and Any updates on when you'll be selling phones here in the US? Uh, I uh, ask you, I have you to ask you every, every time. <laughs> so um, we're obviously getting closer. We're you know, starting to do preparation work to launch in the US, but it's further sort of out what I could even easily predict now. Yeah. We're, we're not talking about launching phones in the US this year, to be clear. Yeah. Um, you know, but it's something that we're we're working on. It's going to take a while. Uh, obviously, preparing phones for the wireless spectrum in the U.S., setting up yeah. after sales, having all of our operations up and running, knowing how to do marketing here yeah. and so on. So, that's one of the reasons, by the way, why we're launching uh, right. this product. Right? It's it's a product made for the U.S. market. We're going to learn how to do business here. Xiaomi drones. When are they coming? There was a hint yesterday. Who talked about there this? There was a hint yesterday online showing up a, a picture of of a potential Xiaomi drone. Is that happening? We are excited about consumer electronics in general. Uh, you know, we've made, as you know, huge investments into a, a number of companies from the from our self-balancing scooter, you know, Ninebot with Segway technology, all the way to uh, home appliances. Um, we're very interested in, in cool electronics which are connected, uh, you know, especially things to do with photography and video and so on and mm -hmm. so forth. So it wouldn't be a terrible guess, <laughs> but I can't say any more at this point. 